Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today. My name is Keith and I will be your host for this webinar. Here with us is Kristen DeToni. Kristen is the founder of Design Pool, a great new resource for creating interior design and decoration projects. Over the next 25 minutes, Kristen will share with us how to utilize Design Pool's pattern library and show us how it can enhance any print business, allowing you to easily enter new markets producing commercial and residential wall coverings, printed textiles, and home decor products. If anyone has any questions during today's presentation, please use the chat button at the top of the screen. Kristen and I will be available for a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Kristen, if you're ready, the stage is all yours. So um, thanks, Keith, and thanks for having me today. Um, so just a teeny bit more about me. I have 23 years of textile design and commercial and residential interiors, and I'm super passionate about print on demand. So I'm probably going to talk really fast today to get in as much information as possible um, within the 20 minutes we have time for questions. So I'm going to give you, a, uh, just start with a brief history of customization and why I think it's so important from the traditional business model to today's business model. So um, the traditional business model is inventory based and I am, my experience uh, is in commercial interiors and so really is basing it off of that model. So traditionally you have the mill which is manufacturing the product um, and then they're working with the jobbers and the jobbers are essentially, essentially the inventory. So they're inventorying the product from the mill and then they are doing you know, the cut and sell to uh, companies such as the OEMs and then the A&D. Um, and the A&D are the architects and designers. And then you have the um, consumers at the very end. So you can see with this business model, it's really tricky because you're you're really far from the mill, which is the very beginning stage, to your to the very end stage. And there's a lot of people in between. And you're hoping that the jobbers and the OEMs and the A&D, that they're making the right decisions that what the mill is manufacturing is actually going to sell. So um, again, it's, it's a really long drawn out model and there's a lot of people in between. And this is where I think um, print on demand and printing and customization is really changing this model. So um, with the traditional business model, from a product impact standpoint, you're looking at uh, very high minimums for customs. You're looking at long lead times and you were looking at very high upcharges because again, um, you had this model and you really want to make sure that, um, you know, the mill was just kind of running and they didn't want to interrupt it with any customs unless it was really going to be worth their while. But with on demand and printing, you're now looking at low minimums, uh, short lead times and low to no upcharges, which is great because that's opening up a world of possibilities and it's going to get you closer to your end consumer. So with that, we have the emerging business model um, of what I consider the on-demand model. So you're going to have the mill and the jobber. They're, they're going to kind of become one. So either the mill is going to become the jobber or the jobber is going to become the mill, um, especially, especially with printing because there's such a, a low point of entry from a cost perspective. It's not like something like Wovens where you're looking at a lot of overhead and gantries and things like that. Um, you're still going to have the OEMs, um, which are manufacturing the furniture, and then you're still going to have the architects and designers because they are the creative types that are then working with the consumer. But again, I think because um, you're shortening this chain, um, this is where I come into play as a design resource. So you're going to need something that your um, consumers in A&D can work with, um, especially when you're talking print on demand. And then to make it even more interesting, when you're looking at commercial and residential interiors, um, the architects and designers have started building building out the spaces virtually, but they're building it in an all white form. So that's that so that people can kind of walk through the space and then have the space built out. But I think it's going to go even further where the entire space could be built out with pattern and furniture and then everything's going to be made on demand. So I think having resources that consumers and the AD can tap into is going to be really important going forward. So that provides a lot of product opportunities. And some of the opportunities you have in commercial interiors by market segment are um, healthcare, you have hospitality, you have office, um, which of course is shifting a little bit after COVID, you have home furnishings, and then you also have indoor outdoor, which isn't necessarily its own market segment, but they do have some special requirements when you're dealing with outdoor versus indoor spaces. Um, I put this chart together to give you a better idea of kind of the subcategories within each market segment. So within healthcare, you have acute care, which is your hospitals, you have assisted living, um, you have pediatric, though there are acute care pediatric settings, but pediatrics is really specific to kids. So sometimes the design is very different than what you would be designing for adults. And then you have receptions such as your doctor's office and dentist's office and places like that um, under the healthcare umbrella. For contract, you have office. So it's also known as contract. I, I should probably know why it's called contract. I have no idea, but that's really office environments. 
Um, then you have hospitality, which is hotel and restaurant. You have transportation, which can be marine, cruise, automotive, and RV. Um, and then you have home furnishings, um, which essentially is your home. So that's a pretty obvious one. So I just started listing the different types of products on the left, and you can kind of see um, some of the product opportunities within the different markets. Um, so I also wanted to mention that I'm not, I have experience in every market except marine, cruise, and RV. So I kind of understand where things are falling. And don't be too deceived to sometimes, um, for example, like when we get down and looking at um, upholstery coated and upholstery woven, you can see there's a lot of dots within a lot of categories. So there's a lot of upholstery across the categories, but upholstery can be, um, the volume might not be huge, but then you have categories such as like carpet and carpet tile, which maybe you don't have as many options, but as far as like flooring goes and wall goes, there's a lot of coverage there. So, you know, the volume can be huge for flooring and wall covering, um, maybe not as huge for something like, uh, you know, uh, framed artwork and or coded, but there's still a lot of possibilities and potential there for business. Um, I wanted to also give you a, a rough idea as far as pricing goes. So healthcare tends to uh, have is a little more palatable for higher price products, um, which essentially means your margin might be a little better. I think it's just because you know there's a, it's a it's a fairly expensive community, and so they seem to um, you know have the understanding for higher price products. Office contract it tends to be a little more um, uh, a little more challenging. Um, hospitality and transportation are the most challenging, and usually that's because the volume is there. So if you think about you're getting you know the Pontiac you know, uh, cars or something like that, or I should say GM, I'm not sure if Pontiac's even around, um, but my, in my day it was. Um, and so, you know, you're getting a lot of volume there um, and usually they're looking for a price break. I mean, you can imagine too, like for a hotel, if you got the, you know, a Marriott hotel and you're looking at, you know, refurbishing 200 rooms. So again, a lot of volume, they're usually looking for a price break. And then home furnishing really ranges from, you know, low to high. And it, and it really just depends on, um, you know, what, what aesthetic you're uh, going into, whether it's kind of a lower aesthetic or a higher aesthetic. So again, you can see a lot of possibilities here for a lot of opportunity. And just to kind of show you now how design pools patterns look on the products. So again, curtains, flooring, upholstery, laminates, window films, bedding, the opportunities are endless. Um, something to think about if you are looking to get into commercial requirements is to consider your testing and physical requirements um, from a commercial and residential standpoint. Commercials tend to be a bit more stringent than residential. So I'm just going to highlight nine different categories, um, but there are testing uh, facilities that you can send your products to for testing. And the great thing about printing is usually you're just testing the substrate. And then once you know that your inks are good as far as like abrasion and light fastness, then you don't have to test every product over and over again. But you have things like abrasion which you know is applicable to tabletops and upholstery and things of that nature. It's just your basic wear. Um, flammability is super important, especially for vertical surfaces. And uh, you do want to be aware that some countries, excuse me, not countries, some states like California have a higher standard on flammability. So um, it's not sometimes like a one size fits all when you're when you're testing some of your products. It's, it does depend on what state you're selling into. Um, soil resistant, that's a pretty big deal, as you can imagine, for a lot of products for home, uh, for automotive, because you're eating in your cars. Um, you know, for healthcare, it's really important. Hospitality, it's important when you think of restaurants and, and those types of places. Water resistant, um, especially for outdoor products, but then also if you're looking at healthcare, they're dealing with a lot of fluids in healthcare, and so you want to make sure that those fluids don't want to permeate um, into the sub part of the product. Um, Recycled is super important for commercial interiors. It's something that we've been uh, tackling since the early 1990s. I was always kind of proud to be part of that um, since we were one of the first industries to really go after it hard. So to have a green story or some sign of re recycled content or excuse me, a green story as well. Um, light fastness is important, not only for outdoor fabrics, but you also have to consider if you're if you're creating something that is um, you know within a commercial space that has a lot of windows. Because, uh, you know, there's still fade happening through windows. Laundering is something to look at. And then also antimicrobial, as you can imagine, with COVID, um, you know, it's antimicrobial is important. It's kind of one of those love-hate relationships. It's sort of been up and down. It was really popular in the 90s and early 2000s. And then it sort of got a bad rap for creating um, super bugs. And now it's kind of coming back up again because of COVID. So just something to be aware of and keep your eye on. Um, so again, just to kind of show you some product uh, wall covering uh, pictures, 
you know, office environments on fabric, printed on glass, um, again, some more wall art, curtains. So the possibilities are really endless. As I said, endless possibilities. So I also wanted to mention too, um, for those of you that are on the call who have print capabilities or are looking, um, you know, or working with a printer, there's a lot of opportunity for print on demand as well um, with drop ship. So there's companies like Printify and Zazzle and Society6 and Etsy and Amazon's even in this mix. Um, and so they, uh, you can kind of see all the different op uh, options here. You've got placemats and books and mugs and enamel mugs, and they're adding more products every day that are that are being able to be printed on and, and drop ship. So it allows um, the flexibility for people to open up their own stores. Um, and again, there's a, then there's a demand for all these products to be made. So what I think too is lacking in this dropship environment is um, to have more like tabletop capabilities. So not just mugs, but maybe plates and bowls um, that are ceramic, not enamel. Um, large bedding, so you don't necessarily have to have a seam down the middle because I don't know anyone who really wants a seam on their sheets. Carpet tiles, um, ceramic tiles. Sustainable solutions I think is really important. It's something, as I mentioned, that's um, uh, it's it's been within the commercial interiors for a long time, and you know I think with the younger generations coming up, they're really sensitive to things being um, sustainable. And then also American made. I know the great thing about the print on demand is a lot of the printing is happening in the U.S., but I think to also have the um, the, the actual products made here as well. So I know we do, so there's some cut and sew, which is phenomenal, so you can print cut and sew, but I also know at this point, a lot of the substrates are still coming from overseas. So if there's any possibility to bring some of that back, I think, um, you know, is a home run. So a little bit about Design Pool and how we work. Uh, we are first and foremost an image library. We currently have over 600 designs and we're growing. Um, we add new designs monthly. We are specific to commercial and residential interior, so everything on our site is specific to that environment. Every design is in seamless repeat and vector format, and the vector format allows you to reduce and enlarge the image without losing resolution. We offer both licensing and proprietary options, which I'll explain in a little bit, and we offer custom coloring and custom design, which I'll also go through. So our two main libraries are licensable and proprietary. So if you're not familiar with these terms, licensable is a business arrangement in which one company gives another company permission to manufacture its product for a specific payment. Um, a lot of cases it's a royalty payment and sometimes it's, it's a one-time flat fee. It just depends on who you're working with. Um, some of the traditional options that exist today, um, as far as image libraries go, they're specific to graphic design. They operate on a basic or extended license. Um, they pay a one-time rate with renewal. Pricing is in points, dollars, or memberships. And then also prices range really from $2 to $1,000. And $2 is for personal use, and $1,000 is obviously if you're going to be using it in a commercial space. And then you're responsible for the license. So um, you just want to be aware of that as you're purchasing uh, or, or yeah, purchasing designs or, or licensing designs from these types of sites. A lot of times I get asked about free images, which I don't have free images on my site. Um, you know, everything, I mean, I, I went to school and have been in this industry for a long time. And so um, there's a lot of value there, but there are some sites out there that do offer some free imagery. Pixabay is one of them, but you need to be aware that when you're searching Pixabay, sometimes they will reference other other images that will take you to paid sites such as Shutterstock. So um, if I need a design that's specific for graphic design, I really like Shutterstock. I think they're reason, uh, their terms are reasonable and that um, their contract's pretty easy to understand. But again, whatever you're doing, just make sure you read the contract and you know what you're getting yourself into. Which brings me to Getty Images, which is a, a you're probably familiar with that when it's a, a really large library. It's a great library, but their agreement's pretty big and you just want to make sure you understand all the fine print because um, you don't want to get yourself in trouble for using an image and then not having the license to it. So with that, Design Pool works a little differently and it's because of the industry that we're, um, that we're targeting. So we are the only library specific to interiors, as I mentioned, and we also only get paid when you get paid. So if you are looking to use Design Pool as a resource, um, and you're a printer, this is how it works with us. So we have licensing options. We have two different plans. We have a basic plan, which is based on a royalty. So you pay us um, um, either by yard or by unit, ho however you're um, selling. And then we have an elite plan, which is a royalty payment with quarterly payments um, for custom color and custom design tweaks, which is it's pretty rare people use the elite plan. Most people are using the basic plan. 
We also have a really simple contract. Um, I try and make it easy so that we don't have to get lawyers involved. Um, we uh, have easy downloads so that you can download direct uh, files directly from the website once you sign the contract, which I'll explain that to a little later. Um, you can pay quarterly or monthly uh, depending on your payment plan. So the contract is pay quarterly, but I'll also accept monthly terms. Um, and then within that, when you are paying, you include um, information like the design and the sales and that type of thing, which just is a way for me to kind of check like, okay, this is what I got paid and this is what was being sold. Uh, you are allowed to manipulate the files yourself. So if you have designers on staff, you can manipulate the files to satisfy your customer needs. But knowing that um, if you're starting with the file and you're manipulating it, it's still our file and royalties are still owed to us. Um, we do offer additional design services if you don't have design staff um, and that's by the hour and we'll quote you what it will cost to complete your project prior to starting. So we have an agreed upon price. It's one stop shopping for your client, so you can put our designs on your site. Um, so either you can send your clients to our site or you can put our designs on your site so your clients don't have to leave. We're happy to provide our images on, that are on our site to you for your site, but if you want something different, there may be a small setup fee to manipulate those files. And then sampling. So if you, um, in a lot of cases with commercial interiors, if you're working with an interior designer, they're gonna wanna see a sample first. So um, you, a lot of times they want that free sample. So if you're not charging for a sample, then you don't need to charge us in order to download a pattern and print a sample. But if you are charging for sample is the samples, then the royalty does, um, is, is part of that process. So as far as accessing the licensable designs, it's really easy on our homepage. Um, it's available viewing to the general public. And so here's just a little bit, an idea of some of the patterns on there. And I do want to mention that all the, as I mentioned, all the designs are in seamless repeat, but we do have designs such as this camping pattern that um, they're called landscape designs. And so they repeat left to right. They just don't repeat top to bottom because they're more of like a mural. And then we do have designs on our site from the Museum Lewiston Auburn in Maine. Um, they're a really interesting museum. They are based on the history of, of um, the history of Maine's manufacturing and textiles is one of them. And so we partnered with them to offer some of their patterns and all the royalties go directly to the museum. So it's just a fun little marketing PR thing too for you. So when you hover over the designs and the licensing, it does give you an idea of a mapped image of maybe how you can use that design. And then when you click on the design, you'll see that every design comes in five colorways and then we add texture to everything as well. And we do provide a video when you're manipulating the files with textures because you want to make sure the textures move with the files so that you don't have any loss of resolution. Um, but essentially you download all the files at once when you're downloading a design and you get the Illustrator and the JPEG at 300 DPI. So accessing the print files, as I mentioned, um, prior to signing the contract, you can you can see the patterns, your customers can see the patterns, but you'll get this sort of, uh, you'll get a read only comment. Once you've signed the contract and um, I'll provide rights to, rights to you for the website, when you log in, then you'll get the add to cart and you can download, um, you just go through the checkout process, but everything's free. Until of course you print it and then you pay me the royalty. So the proprietary library, if you're not familiar with the terminology, proprietary design is one that is owned by a company. It also implies that the company has not developed specifications that would allow other companies to duplicate the products. So because of that, um, the proprietary is available with a free membership. Um, and we did this because it protects the buyer and the buyer owns the designs and the copyrights once the, once the design is purchased. So it's really easy to sign up. It just takes a few seconds and then I'll get the email that someone's interested. Um, it does require a valid email address that you are a valid business owner and you're, and you're you know, looking to potentially purchase. Um, because again, we're protecting this because you are purchasing the design outright. And you know, a lot of times if you're buying a design, you wanna make a splash by putting it out there. You don't want to know that the whole entire world has seen it. So the prices range from 400 to $2,000 depending on how complex the design is. And there's a, a little brief overview here. You can see some of the designs. Um, and same thing, when you buy the design, you get five colorways in both the AI and JPEG format. And then once it's purchased, the um, image is removed from the site because um, it's a one and done so that no one else can see that again. We offer convenient search functions. So again, thinking of the community that we're dealing with, which are interior designers, um, we wanna make sure that they can find things very easily and not have to spend hours and hours searching through multiple pages. Um, right now it's a toggle on search on the top left, but we will be changing that in the future. Um, so really, it's to find the perfect pattern. 
And some of just the categories, you can search by color family, by theme, by market, by technique, by shape. Um, you can also uh, interconnect the categories. So you can search by, you know, um, circle houndstooth or, you know, green houndstooth, or, you know, if you're looking for something in that, that's really specific to healthcare that's maybe hand painted, you can do that as well. So find exactly what you need pretty quickly. Also, you can create wish lists for your customers. So if you um, are using Design Pool as a resource and you maybe don't have a direct link as a, as a printer or you're not ready to sign up, but you know you have a customer who's looking for something, you can create a wish list for them. So you can do that by just clicking on the little heart and adding it to your wish list. Um, we have multiple wish list privacy settings, so you can make a public, shared, or private. And then you can just share the URL and it does still bring the customer back to our site, but it does bring them back to the URL page that you created. And then for them to be able to see the additional colorways that we just click on the view and then they can scroll through the, the images and see the additional colors there. Um, so it's one way to uh, kind of use the site if we're not on your site. So again, they're still on our site, but it, it does curate it a little bit more for you specific to your client base. As I mentioned, we often offer custom coloring. Um, so here's an example here where somebody liked our cute little critter pattern, but we didn't offer it in a purple. And so we um, did a quote and uh, gave them a few different uh, shades of purple. You, they can also provide color chips to us. Um, we can work with lots of, you know, Pantone paint chips. I've kind of worked with the gamut. So, um, you know, whatever's, whatever is easiest and whatever uh, term, uh, color terminology your clients like to speak in. And then we offer custom design too. So sometimes it does start, here's an example where somebody uh, liked the pattern on the left, but then wanted some tweaks and, and then also color to their specifications. So, and in this case, they didn't want the texture, so we made everything flat. So there's that possibility as well. Um, we make it easier to search patterns on the go. Of course, everything's mobile now, so you can pull us up on your cell phone or your iPad. Um, and we are in the process of enhancing our user experience. So we do have a, uh, a few glitches on the site that we're working on. Um, so we're working on making the site cleaner, identifying colors, and really just having more designs overall. Um, so that's gonna be happening this month. And that is it. So thank you so much for your time. And we're gonna take some questions. I think I did okay, 22 minutes. And I'm gonna leave it here on this slide for um, if there's any questions. Thanks, Kristen. That was great. That was uh, that was a lot of information. I know. But you did a good job getting through it quickly. I have um, I do have a few questions for you. Um, I have one from Kevin in PA. Uh, mm -hmm. He's asking which market do you see growing the fastest when you were you were talking about the different segments. Yeah, so healthcare has been a really big one. So I would say maybe about 10 or 15 years ago, there wasn't a lot of competition there. Um, and I would, you know, it kind of as offices started to shrink because you guys probably all remember we used to sit in cubicles and there was a lot of space um, to put patterns on where it was like cubicles and walls and flooring. Um, and then things became more open and walls were taken down and we all lost our privacy, which then acoustics became really important. But because of that, a lot of people that were in the office environments really switched into healthcare. And as you know, we have the, we have the aging population with the baby boomers. Um, and then again, the nice thing about healthcare is they have a little more palette for some higher price products. So um, so yeah, that's that's where I would say the the growth is right now. And, and especially with COVID, there's a lot of uncertainty with what's happening in office spaces. Um, but I do think that home office and or home furnishings will probably continue to grow a little bit too, um, as a lot of people have been told that they might not be going back into the office. So um, people that made semi-permanent spaces in their homes might be spending a little more money again to make more permanent um, office spaces in their home. Nice. Is there certain products in that that you see that are that generate a higher margin versus, you know, if somebody's, you know, upholsteries, I know, you know, are generally more expensive than, you know, than other types of, you know, decoration textiles. But is there a particular item that you've, you know, you've had, you've been working with customers on that seem to be, you know, more expensive or generate, I guess, a better margin? Um, that's a good question. I mean, you know, you're probably familiar with this. It really go, comes, it really is around volume and, and kind of, uh, you know, I would say to what, what, um, really at the time, like, you know, what, what people are willing to accept. I mean, you know, everything, it's so funny. Cause I mean, I remember, for example, like when I started automotive, like those companies were willing to pay, you know, $15 a yard. And within the span of four years, when I left, they were willing to pay $7 a yard. 
Um, so, you know, and I think volume does a lot to drive that, obviously, um, because as I mentioned, like hospitality and, and you know, um, um, restaurants and hotels, usually because the volumes are so great, they're looking for those price breaks. Um, so I don't know, I, I guess I shouldn't say that it's necessarily around a particular product, because I think within every product category, such as seating or wall covering, you're going to have your high end and you're going to have your low end. Um, and so when I say low end, I don't mean it's like a bad product. I just mean it's probably less expensive. And then, you know, your higher end is probably going to be, you know, the perceived quality should be higher end and more expensive. Um, so, I, yeah, I'm, I'm probably not answering that very well, but I would say there's 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 always a range depending on what you're looking at and really who your target customer is to. No, that makes sense. It, it does. Are, you know, I think that's helpful knowing, uh, you know, as you look to enter a new market, you know, where, you know, I'm going to want to enter on an item that, you know, that I, I can hopefully make money with. So I think. Yeah. I yeah. And I think that's a good point. I mean, it's really about doing your research too. So, you know, for example, um, I mean, print on demand within commercial interiors is still something that the interior designers have no idea exists. So part of my uh, business model is educating that community to let them know that like, oh my gosh, you don't need to be buying inventory anymore. Like you can get everything made on demand. Like you can get exactly what you want when you want it. So, and you know, with that there, so I've seen products now enter the marketplace with, I'd say within the last 10 years, some are very high priced, but they're very nice products. They have a great sustainability story. Um, you know, they have a great like cleanability story, things like that. Like they, they've really done a good job at, at uh, creating a niche for themselves and they're on demand. Demand. So to top it off, you can get whatever you want. Um, yeah, so I think there's I think there's a lot of room. There's a lot of potential. There's a lot of room for growth. It's just probably, you know, do, do your homework a little bit too, which I think most people do before, you know, making a huge investment in something, but there's a lot of potential. Um, one of the questions uh, that was posted was, uh, do you provide any suggestions for uh, creating pattern groupings? Uh, I know you'd, uh, I, you had talked about, uh, you know, when you search and, you know, recommending different types of colors and stuff like that. Do you, uh, anything as far as providing assistance with, you know, what pattern goes with another pattern? Yeah, so we're always happy to help too. Um, with some of the companies that I've worked with in the past, if they had um, especially a very specific, um, like flooring, for example. So not every pattern on our site is 100% flooring specific. And so what I did was I curated a collection for them based on, you know, from the site saying, okay, how, number one, how many designs do you want to put on your site or how many designs do you want to carry? And then from that, I'll go ahead and curate what I think is, you know, the best flooring designs that I have on the site. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm completely open to that. I love, you know, helping people. So whether it's curating something like that or, or, you know, I need five designs that look good together. I think we've been doing that with you guys for a little bit for some of your sampling. So yeah, th things that color coordinate and then also work together well from a, a, a pattern standpoint. Awesome. And, uh, last question was, uh, do you have any print partners that you work with? So we do. Um, the print partners are on our homepage, and I'm going to try and remember all of them off the top of my head. Um, we have eight right now. So there's, and they're all over the country. Um, there's Chroma Imaging, there's Image Craft, there's Graphic Image Flooring, there's LDI Interiors. Um, oh my gosh, now I should say this and I should know them all because I really don't want to leave any of them out because they're all wonderful. Um, Mendel, um, Color Reflections. And I know I'm forgetting one that they print on uh, vivid board. I think that's all of them. Um, so yeah, again, they're all, if you work with any of them, our goal is to not have you leave your current printer. If you love them, keep working with them. A lot of them offer more than one product. Um, what we've done on design pool is that if you don't know any printers, um, we kind of gave them, um, each of them have a featured product on our site that you can work with them. But once you're there, I mean, you know, you can really work with whoever you want to. We're, we're really just the, we're the image library resource, but we realized since we're such a new concept, um, especially into the interior design community, if we didn't have um, suggestions of where people could get these things printed, we, we, we kind of wanted to close the gap. So we're also a resource for printers as well. Awesome. Well, thank you, Kristen. The, the information you provided today was great. Uh, I think it's it's an awesome new service and it's it's definitely got a lot of potential to help, you know, to help anyone be able to enter into a new market, uh, especially given how much, you know, interior decoration is is grown so much in the, uh, you know, in the last 12 to 24 months. So um, thank you everyone for uh, for joining us.
Uh, if you have any questions after uh, the webinar, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Our specialists here uh, are available to reach out to as well as Kristen. Um, if you'd like to see demonstrations and to see some of these patterns printed in person, we have a 10,000 square foot demo facility located in central New Jersey and we're open for visitors. Also, uh, I invite you to check out our YouTube channel. Uh, we'll be posting a copy of this webinar a little bit later today if you'd like to view it again. So with that, I'll, uh, I'll say uh, thank you and uh, goodbye and uh, hope to see everybody soon. Thanks, Kristen.